Hi everybody, it's Lori from Lori's Resourceful Treasures. Welcome. I am today going to talk about some basil. Um, you can see my basil here is kind of growing out of control. Um, I meant to do a video on basil a while ago while it was at a good height, but it kind of kept growing. So I love it when they grow, but um, this one I need to trim back because it's way too tall and it's getting kind of spindly. I want it more bushier. So that is what I'll do is I will trim it down a little bit. This one is holy basil. Oh, you can see the beautiful purple flowers on it. Um, this one um, is a little bit different looking with the leaves. That's how you can tell them apart. Um, there are different properties for basil versus holy basil, but a lot of the benefits from each plant are kind of overlapping. So they do some of the same things. But I just wanted to show you what I do with basil. This one um, I started in from seed and this one both. I started from seed. This one seemed to take forever to get started. Um, it germinated and then it just grows really slow. This one seemed to go a little faster. I don't know, maybe I had it in better light or something, but um, I am hoping um, to get them both um, potted in a really nice pot because you can see I just have them in just some little, uh, this is just a reusable little pot. Um, and I want to get them um, outside in a bigger pot. And once the weather um, cooperates, then we'll get them outside and they can do their thing. Um, they are annuals, so it is, you can put them into the ground, but I don't because um, they will not last, especially in our Illinois weather. Um, they will die off. And so I put them in a pot and then I bring them inside. I have learned that I need to maybe put the pot in the garage for a few days because the little gnats um, must lay their eggs in there. And then when you bring them right in, you got gnats. And sometimes you can't help it, but there's some different um, I put uh, neem oil, I mix up some in water and spray it on my plants to help with any gnat infestation. Um, otherwise, you can um, just get those sticky things and then the gnats land on them and die. Um, but either way, a few gnats, it seems like it's par for the summer course to have them. But um, I just wanted to bring up the basil um idea because there's so much you can do with it. Um, you can take the leaf off. Um, I just love to just rub my fingers and smell it. It's just such a lovely fragrance. It is overwhelming, but um, I, I really enjoy plants. So, and they have so many different um, help that they can do for you, <laughs> help that they can do for you, um, but they're very helpful um, in your just everyday life. You can tear off a plant chew on it. It's supposedly helps with migraines. I don't have migraines, so I don't know, but you know, it'd be worth a try to try it with, if you have a headache, uh, chew on it, or at least just smell it and, um, or get you some essential oil and rub it on your temples. I don't know. Um, I've never worked with it that way, but, um, that is what I have heard. Um, I infuse it into an oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. These are little one ounce containers. I um, start with them in here, and if I sell them, I'll sell them this way. Uh, this one is lemongrass. I sold my basil, so I'm out of it. But um, this is uh, the oil infused. Um, you can also take infused extra virgin olive oil, and you can put basil in it steep it for a few weeks and then have it for dressing for your salads for whatever you drizzle oil on bread um, that would be a nice little additive to your uh, pantry um, this is basil salt that i did i'll post a couple pictures um, but this is fun to do and that is your basil salt i use this a lot i use it on you know, uh, pizza or um, just different things that I normally add salt, I'll use this instead. And um, it is with Himalayan salt, um, but 
it just really flavors it up, um, your food up quite a bit. So all you do is you, um, you can take the leaves and you can mix them in the salt, crushed up, and then let it dry. Um, you don't even have to dry your leaves first. You can use them fresh, put them in the salt. The salt helps dry up the um, liquid in the basil and just make sure they're really, really dry. Otherwise, you will have mold in your salt. Um, otherwise, you can dry them first and then put them with the salt uh, either way. Um, and then I have my trusty old tincture here. Um, this is uh, basil that I did a few months ago. It is um, with uh, vodka and it infused for six weeks. It's a lovely color. I did want to show you my little uh, band here that I cover my tinctures with when I'm just waiting to find out what to do with them. Um, see, it covers it so the light doesn't get in. It's just a, some muslin that I sewed together. I put um, some um, a thing around it so that it stays up. And that's it. And you can decorate the bag. You can put, you know, with Cricut, you can add basil to the outside. I just have a little label on top, nothing fancy. Um, but yeah, that's it. And I love these. And I'm going to make a bunch more. I thought I'd get some more pretty fabric um, to make it, you know, a little prettier, maybe with some uh, plants on the fabric. And um, you don't really need thick fabric, just enough so it covers it so the light doesn't get to it. Um, but that's what I do while um, I'm waiting to use these um, and have them on hand. I will cover them and uh, it makes it really nice, easy for you to do that. Um, so uh, what I do with the tincture is I'm going to have it on hand for a disinfectant um, and then I'll have it in a spray bottle and I'll be able to spray it on uh, any sores or anything that, you know, is a little doesn't heal right away or something i can spray it on there disinfect it and then i'll have it ready for whenever i need it if that time comes um, otherwise you can use them fresh uh, you can do the tincture you can put them in tea um, you can dry them and put them in tea with some other things so that you don't have just basil flavor but it adds a little bit of a punch um, and then you can uh, put them in a smoothie you can even do that fresh. I would suggest fresh um, in the smoothie. Um, you want, you maybe uh, want to get it really, really small because you don't want to chew on uh, chunks of basil. You could dry it and powder it and then put it in your smoothie. That might be better. Then you won't get the uh, chunks of leaves um, to chew on. But, you know, if you like basil, then it's not a big deal. Um, and then you can also like dry it and put it in bread. Um, it makes a nice little flavorful bread. Um, you can mix it with sage or thyme or oregano, any of those, and then have yourself some uh, lovely bread. Um, but yeah, this is just a few ideas for basil. And um, I suggest you just keep it on hand and you can have it by your kitchen and then clip off leaves as you need it. Um, or you can continue on and just make stuff out of it or um, have it, you know, ready to use. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to do with basil. Um, I have written them, typed them up on my computer. Um, this one's basil. This one's holy basil. Uh, and what they do, um, I remind myself if it's an annual or perennial of how I will take care of it, um, what you can do with you know, little recipes or what uh, treatments it can do. Um, if any of you want a free copy of this, I can um, send this to you by email um, digitally. And um, you can have a copy of these. Just um, I will give you the details down below of where to email, where to get a hold of me so that I can send you this. I will need your email address. And then I will um, pop this to you uh, by the computer and so that you can have a reference of basil and holy basil. And um, just want to help you out and, you know, just love and life because God saved mine.